So yeah, really quick, uh, my name is Malta. I'm the creator and tech lead of AMP. This is Rudy. I'm Rudy, uh, product manager on AMP. So we're almost at the end of the day here. How is everyone feeling? Good, good. Um, actually, I think we've had a really great sequence of talks. I hope it's been really helpful to hear from folks you know, in first person their experience building AMP. And I'd actually like to just have everyone give a quick round of applause again to all the great speakers we've had throughout the day. Um, yeah, so hopefully you've been uh, learning a lot hearing from all these folks uh, who are working on AMP or building uh, with AMP and, you know, ultimately doing what we're all looking to do here, which is help bring a better mobile web for users all around the world uh, through AMP. Um, so right after this talk, we're going to move to a Q&A, as I mentioned, so get those questions ready. Um, but what we're going to do now is we thought we'd talk a little bit about some of the next steps that, you know, Malta and I and, and other, the others uh, working closely with the project see for AMP. Um, so before we dive in, it's worth stopping to just kind of note that the question of what's next in AMP is really something that we all play a role in helping to shape the answer to. And why is this? Well, whether it's filing issues or the chats we have in Slack or even on email and face-to-face -face meetings, whether we're separated by screens or not, um, all of the activity that you all do, all of your contributions and input help propel AMP forward each and every day. And you know, sometimes the paths on, you know, the next steps on this path are relatively easy to anticipate. And then sometimes there will be a GitHub issue or some discussion, and something totally unexpected. And that's totally by design. You know, when we started AMP, I couldn't have imagined setting the project up in, in a different way than how we have it, which is a, as an open source collaboration where ideas can come from anywhere, features can be built by anyone, and bugs can be fixed by anyone. And so you know, we're stronger at this working together. And I have no doubt that the trajectory of AMP is changed by the fact that we're meeting here today, that we're having discussions, um, that we're sort of learning about each other's work, um, and, and we're going to carry that forward in determining what ne next steps we do take. So, you know, just to recap, as we think about the future of AMP, it's worth sort of reflecting on the early days of AMP, and they were reasonably straightforward. You know, we, we had uh, really, um, you know, uh, discussions with news publishers to help shape this initially, and the steps we wanted to take were, were pretty easy to see. We wanted to ship a JS library that would run really fast and, and show static news content, uh, you know, blazingly fast. We wanted to make ubiquitous interactive features like image carousels um, and, and light boxes. Uh, we wanted to support those through nice web components. Uh, of course, ads. It should support ads at least a little bit. Um, <laughs> And you know, maybe tracking pixels are OK for the first launch, which is what we had in the developer preview. And a full-blown analytics solution could wait maybe a quarter. Um, so uh, and finally, you know, with news publishers, of course, paywalls are a pretty critical feature. And, and so that was another one that we had our eyes on uh, right from the get-go. So again, reasonably straightforward, kind of like a checklist. But then from there, things kind of branched a bit. So this is when we uh, started listening a lot more and, and hearing the feedback that was coming in. And so you heard from Natalia this morning about you know, publishers who wanted to do even more effective onward journeys. And so we built features like AMP List um, that let you sort of dynamically populate these, um, these onward journey links at the bottom of news articles. Or we heard, hey, wouldn't it be nice to take this page and sort of give, give some insight into the broader site structure, be able to help navigate users to the different sections of a, of a news site or any site. And so we built navigational menus supported by AMP Sidebar. Um, or, you know, thinking more about dynamic experiences and live blogging. It was an election year in the U.S. this past year. Sports is always going, sports are always coming in and out of season, and, and people love keeping up with these events. So we built things like AMP Live List to enable, um, you know, live updating content pages in AMP. And so this is all to say that feedback has helped drive the product, and building out that product over time has helped drive even more feedback. And so let's go and keep those wheels turning together. Right, and when we kind of talked about what we should do in this talk, Rudy and I were going back and forth, making a list, like what's in this, what's, what should be in this talk, and then we realized this list, that's just our OKRs. So who here knows what OKRs are? So it's like, it's a thing that many companies do. Google is one of them. It stands for Objective and Key, and key Results, which is management speaks for goals. Um, and so every quarter we like write this down, or at least every year. And um, we kind of really think hard about the things we should do. And um, then we try to execute on them. And so we thought it would be actually the best thing to just say, uh, why don't we like, present our OKRs uh, to the, the group of all of you? And the, the goal is really to kind of give a good overview. So the real list is kind of long. So we'll, we'll, we'll cut it short a little bit. 
um, but we really want to be like super transparent. And um, again, the, the way this kind of works is, you know, we, we had it in the panel, you know, who, who's working on the open source project. And so, so, so my team is doing it full time, and obviously, so our goals are very um, important for the direction of AMP because in the end, um, you know, that's the code that's being written is, 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 is driving stuff forward. And so our first goal um, for, for this year's is that users love AMP. Yeah, so it's just as simple as that. We want, uh, you know, our OKRs begin with end users. We want all users to love AMP. So what's going on there? Well, there are a couple ways to approach this. One is to think about, you know, is the page um, doing what the user wants it to do? Is that a pleasing experience? And then, of course, there's, is the page, like, visually pleasing and, 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 and nice to consume? So let's start with that second one. So you heard earlier today that we, uh, we launched a project called AMP Start. And so this is the beginning of a, of a pretty serious investment on our part. Uh, we wanted a place where you could go and quickly be up and running with some nicely styled AMP pages. And we have a bunch of different full page templates. And you know, one of the tricks is when you're getting into AMP, you have to learn like, OK, there's some CSS restrictions. Um, there's various like format restrictions. And so this is a way to get something nice that you can start from, and then you can just slowly add bits to the page um, based on those capabilities. And yes, they're responsive too. So you know, because all developers of AMP should be increasingly be taking advantage of the fact that AMP supports responsive design. And so you should build pages that look good not only on small smartphones, but also on large desktops. And so uh, the fact that these uh, responsive templates, you know, we, we want to basically send that out as a message. Like You should be thinking increasingly about how do you make sure that these pages look good on all screen sizes. And so AMP Start really joins a lineup of, of one other um, resource we have, which is AMP by Example, and which has been out for a year. So if AMP by Example is where you had to figure out, you know, how do I get something done in AMP? You've heard a lot of cool talks today where people have kind of given some insight into some of the tricks you can do with, it, with using components in perhaps unexpected ways. Well, then AMP Start is a place you can go to ensure that the new experiences you're building are looking great out of the gate. Uh, we're also planning to work with CMS providers over the coming years, you know, and, uh, with this project uh, finally out, so that anyone who wants to use AMP Start as a baseline for templates or to offer template choice for the users can go ahead and take advantage of that. Some more stuff. So you heard, uh, you know, earlier today uh, we had um, with, with animation. So, you know, some of the investments we're starting to do are to make, you know, just the on-page experience uh, much nicer, add those small touches. So we're adding support for things like parallax effects and generally like scroll bound sort of events that you can add to your pages. Uh, you also heard more about the things we're doing with, uh, with images. So we have uh, up, you know, plans to upgrade the, um, the way you can handle the carousels and the light boxes so that you can expose thumbnails and, and um, really make that a much better experience. And also, we have some plans around improving video. We'd like to do more with the interactions with video. And of course, we've heard a lot of feedback around video analytics, and, 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 and we want to do some more things there. And then one last thing to really call out is, you know, so responsive design is supported in AMP. And you've heard that just now and in the talks earlier. And we want to make sure that everyone's aware that you can also you know, be thinking about building a PWA with AMP. And so Alex has a great talk coming up tomorrow, which you should check out. Um, and, and, you know, this is, is something that really puts folks on a path toward building uh, pages canonically in AMP, which is something we'd love to see happening more. Um, and if you're interested in this, you know, I bet there's, there's some bits to, you know, launching a canonical experience in AMP that we haven't even sort of uncovered yet. You heard a lot about the experience uh, around building the ampproject.org site itself as a canonical AMP. Um, so get in touch with us if you're, if you're kind of going down this road because we think it's an important one for everybody to be taking into consideration. Right. Our, our next key result is that we want AMP's time to first contentful paint. So that's the first paint of the page that somehow makes sense that, that in the new sense would, for example, show you the, the text um, across the search corpus. So that means coming from search, uh, Google search, is reduced to a median of 400 milliseconds. Right now, it's about 700, 800, 900 milliseconds. So um, this would be roughly a doubling in speed. Um, and that's not counting pre-rendering, which is makes us instant. So we, would, we really want to be uh, under, under one second. And so there's actually two big things we're, we're planning to do um, that we hope will push, push us over this finish line. Um, the first one is uh, so-called foreign fetch service worker. Now, um, who here knows what a service worker is? Almost everyone. Awesome. So uh, here's a graphic. Um, actually. Mariko, draw it. 
Uh, you should check out her Twitter feed for more of these. Um, which is basically, like, it's just explaining a small aspect of how service workers work. Um, they, they can do all these magic things with like notifications and blah, blah, blah. But um, they, they, they have one core feature, which is to act as this kind of cache that sits between uh, the, you know, the user and the network so that you can always respond from the service worker even if your um, network is offline or you're like, um, on the wrong planet. So um, that's kind of the baseline. And, and the way this works, which isn't even that intuitive, is the service worker belongs to the website. And now your typical website would talk to like all these, I mean, to your own server, to maybe your other server, and to five CDNs, right? Um, but the caching is really per website. So if, say, you load React from like JavaScript CDN and um, you cache in a service worker, it'll be in your cache. If the other site caches the same resource from the same URL, it'll again be in their service worker if they have one, right? Um, so foreign fetch kind of turns this around. So where each CDN can have their own service worker. And this is nicer because, well, I mean, the other one is very important because it can request, reply to your main request. But this allows very nice, well, like great controlled caching across all these CDNs, right? And this is a feature coming to, to Chrome as, as we speak. And in the uh, con concrete case for, for, for AMP, it means that we basically have the service worker sitting our, on the domain that delivers our JavaScript, and all the AMP pages talk to it, right? So there's a single service worker that's shared across every single AMP page on the internet. And we have one very simple goal, which is to never, ever again fetch any AMP JavaScript from the network. Asterisk, like, within the critical path of the user requests. That's basically our promise, that whenever you load an AMP page and it says, I want this JavaScript, it never has to go to the network to do this. It always comes from the local device. So what does this service worker do? Um, it has two primary uh, things, actually. It's pretty simple, um, except it's entirely complicated. Um, which we'll talk about IO. Um, it's, it's, it's not easy. Um, but like, so one of the things that we're doing um, on the AMP cache, so you've heard like sometimes the AMP cache is much faster than the, um, the origin website. So one of the things the AMP cache is doing is it's rewriting the JavaScript URLs. So um, the one that you have to put on your page, the v0.js, which we, by the way, shouldn't have called v0.js, um, has a relatively short cache time because we kind of have to be able to push new releases and it's always the same URL, so um, it cannot have the very long cache time. So when we surf from the cache, um, we rewrite that URL to be a specific release. And so that lower URL can be cached forever because whenever we actually have a new release, that URL is just gonna, just gonna change, right? And so the first thing that Service Worker is doing is it's doing this particular rewrite of the URL on the client side. And that means that this optimization, which so far only applied for AMP surf from the AMP cache, now applies to every AMP page surf from your own origin, which I think is really nice. Um, there is, however, one problem with the scheme, um, which maybe is only a small problem, but it is a problem, that you know, we try to push once a week. And so, because you know, next week there's a new release ID, new release hash, and so as a user, if you, for example, you're a seven-day active AMP user, you have at least one, in quotes, bad experience per week because uh, we pushed. You don't have the new release in your cache, so you get a cold cache hit, um, which is very sad, right? And so the service worker does something which, in a way, is uh, very different from how the web usually works, but I think it's quite awesome. So here's the dialogue. So the, you know, the page says, I would like to have AMP release N. And then the service worker will just say, well, I don't have it. I'll just give you the last one, even though you asked for something else. And so what that means is that um, the service worker, even though it might not have the version that the user wants, it can always give them the version that it has, hopefully from, from a week before. And then what it will do is, in the background, it will fetch the new release, so that when you look at the next AMP page, you get the fresh version. But um, for that transition period, you can, uh, you, uh, you always get the, whatever you have on your device. And so together, you get the, the promise, which is that the fetching that JavaScript is never in the critical path surrendering the page. All right, so that's the first one. Um, 
The second one is server-side rendering on the M cache. Um, so to understand what this is, we have to look at the flow, what is actually happening in the browser when you load an M page. Obviously, the browser has to load the page. Like, there's really no way around this. Um, and then you've probably all put like a little the AMP boilerplate Java CSS into your page. Its main function is that it makes the page be basically blank, be a white page. Um, and then the AMP JavaScript loads, and the AMP JavaScript inserts a bunch of CSS into the page. Um, basically, like the pr the main styling for like how AMP image looks. Um, get the, the CSS for those, all those, you know, those layout attributes in place. And um, yeah, and then finally it goes and does what we call bootstraps the web components. So you, for example, you might have seen that stuff like AMP YouTube um, can like reserve the box even though we don't yet have downloaded the AMP YouTube extension. That's one of the things we do. So, but that's this like reserving the box part of the equation. That's being done during page boot. And then finally, when all that's done, we show the page. So we undo that first step where the boilerplate hit the page. And um, all of this is work. It, it'll take some time. Um, it can take around 200 to, to 400 milliseconds on a shitty phone. Um, so we'd like to not do it. So the, the, again, the, the main work here is really this part. Um, it's the hard part. So um, going from web component to the HTML that you need to actually draw what the, what the user expects. And for example, you've probably all put like layout responsive on the element. Um, what it does, it, it creates the HTML for this crazy hack for responsive images, which basically um, puts in a diff that has like a uh, padding that's a percentage that's based on the you know, aspect ratio, something you hopefully have never done before. Um, but like, that's, that's what it does, and uh, when we, what we are going to do is we're going to server-side render this. Um, and it means they all go away. In particular, um, you know, first of all, we can like, kill that first step. We can kill the boilerplate, because if we do all the others, we don't have to do it anymore. Um, we still need to load AMP's JavaScript, but it no longer blocks showing the page, um, because its primary function is being done on the server we are just going to insert that AMP built-in JavaScript on the server side, um, and then we'll go and implement all the stuff that we have done in JavaScript in our serving stack. That's the, the most important part, the bootstrap part. And obviously, that last step of showing the page is no longer needed because we literally did never hide it, right? And so loading AMP pages becomes this, um, which, as you see, cut out five steps. Um, which, and, and in particular, drives down the, um, the load time to ideally only exactly one request. CSS is in line. Um, there's no JavaScript at all in the critical pass. Right? Let me quickly address this. Um, there was a question on the panel, actually, about fonts. So fonts would still be in the critical pass, um, but they're uh, amortized constant time. F funny, funny word for it never takes more than three seconds. Um, AMP has also a nice trick in it. If you have a link tag for external fonts, um, we will kill that link tag after three seconds, wait for the page to draw, and put it back in. So you get the same effect of, of um, flash of unstyled text um, that you would get after the timeout. Um, just a little aside. All right, uh, little technical excursion, um, but I, I think this is super exciting. I'm excited for this to launch. Thanks, Malta. Uh, thanks, Malta. So, so next up, uh, continuing on the main objective, which is we want users to love AMP. Um, as, as I think many of you sort of heard today, uh, one of the next frontiers for AMP is e-commerce. So uh, specifically, our goal is that we want to drive you know, broader e-commerce site adoption and uh, platform adoption. So um, you know, that's a really big goal for this year. And, and one of the you know, things that you saw in the talks was that we're building features that are hopefully you know, really going to help address these use cases. When we started thinking about e-commerce and, 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 and you know, companies like eBay and WeGo have been super helpful in terms of um, helping us sort of frame this thinking, learn more about the use cases, um, we realized that you know, there's a lot of things that 
possibly are supported in certain e-commerce flows, but then you turn to a different kind of page type, like a product detail page, and there's things that just aren't supported. So features like AMP Bind are, are sort of an answer to that uh, very general sort of usage, but it really helps nail this kind of canonical use case where you have color pickers, and you have an inventory restriction and sizing, and you want to be able to offer that sort of light to medium weight configuration on the page. So we're super thrilled about that, and you heard much more about that in Will's talk. And so AMP Bind is coming soon. We'd love to get your feedback on it um, as we proceed. And we think that's going to be really important to solving a lot of the kinds of e-commerce use cases we heard about. And yet, that's still not going to leave us with having solved all of them. So here's just a sampling of some of the other things you know, that uh, you, you might expect to be on the list, things like search autocomplete or, or richer ways to customize the forms. Um, of course, e-commerce analytics tracking. We have a pretty robust analytics package in AMP today. But when you pivot and start thinking about e-commerce, there's yet another you know, set of new things that you need to be thinking about, um, and, and including things up to like real time or, or new modal affordances. So really all over the map. But AMP Bind really solves a, a good chunk of, of ones that are kind of similarly defined. And then there's a whole host of others that are kind of on our punch list that we're going to start working through. So next up, uh, I want to move on to our next objective, which is advertising on AMP. So advertising is obviously very critical. It got like an applause like uh, just earlier when I was talking about it briefly. Um, it's something we've been thinking about from the start. You know, when we launched the developer preview for AMP, we had support for, um, for advertising. And um, you know, it's one of the uh, biggest things we focused on. And, and because of that, we have over 100 or so ad networks who have now integrated with the project, which offers choice to publishers who want to integrate um, ads into AMP. And we've also done a lot of innovation on the format. And yet all of this, um, and by that I mean like uh, in terms of the different sort of ad formats that you can apply. And so all of this you know, is still happening in the context of a legacy sort of ads ecosystem. And one of the first things we noticed when we were you know, observing the first AMP pages out in the wild is you'd have a blazingly fast page that loaded um, almost instantly, and then you'd have like blank boxes. And you're like, OK, what is this thing? And what it is, generally, is an ad that is still taking its sweet time to load. And maybe by the time it's loaded, the user's already scrolled past it. So that's really good for nobody. It's good, not good for publishers. It's not good for advertisers. And so going forward with AMP, we think there's a really cool opportunity to say, what if we took the AMP format and all of the security and performance gains that we've achieved with it and start applying it toward building ad creative? And so that really factors into our OKR, which is specifically unbreak display advertising on the web. Um, and so that, you know, that's going to be our next uh, big effort involving ads throughout this year. And so you may hear. Uh, you may have heard a lot about AMP ads, and you'll he be hearing more about it going forward. But it's really to take the AMP spec uh, subset of it and, and allow for the construction of ad creative. Ad creative that'll be more performant, can cooperate with the rest of an AMP page if it's loaded in an AMP page. But these ad, uh, ads can also be loaded inside of non-AMP pages, where they'll still carry with them the, the speed improvements that everybody knows from the AMP format. And so Malta's going to dive deeper into our specific goals around uh, driving this throughout the year. Right. So the, the next goal, I think, is um, think about So one of the rules about OKRs is they're supposed to be really ambitious. So I think this definitely falls in this category. So our goal is that the battery consumption and frame rate of an AMP page with AMP ads is better or equivalent than the same page loaded with an ad blocker. So um, we really want to be able to say, um, why are you using an ad blocker? And if you say, because ads use battery, um, and they um, make me not be able to scroll, then we want to say, this is now changing with AMP ads. You, you know, this, these problems are just going to go away. Um, and the, the most awesome thing about this goal is it actually allows us to use AMP parameters in AMP. <laughs> So, and this is not a joke. So we have a test lab um, that has devices running, and they have their power supply um, replaced so that you can measure exactly the energy consumption that's happening um, during um, their work. And so you can actually you know, test these things. Um, so this is happening. I'm really excited about it. Um, so the, the work we're actually doing is so we, we, um, we're introducing an animations framework. Um, that's in particular important, obviously, for, for ads, because they like to animate stuff. Um, there's work to enable third parties to collect spam signals, that kind of thing. Um, I think the, the, the most important way how to get energy savings is currently ads often animate when they're not on screen. 
which wastes a lot of energy. So cutting that out um, will be very important. Um, and obviously, we're doing other stuff like ensuring that animations actually happen on the GPU, which uses less battery than the CPU, um, all these kind of things. Um, there's a session tomorrow at 1.30 that kind of goes um, way more in depth in, into what this actually means. Cool. Um, then the next objective is a bit different, um, it, but it's very important for me. Like in my role as a tech lead, that I find it very important that uh, we keep AMP healthy. So you've seen how we went from something that was designed for news to, to adopt more and more use cases. So it's apparently even capable of building a messaging app. And so the requirements change, and that means that the framework has to change because we couldn't anticipate um, all the things, how it, how, it, how it should be. So we're doing a few things. Um, our goal is that all performance regressions that we have um, are caught before we fully roll out releases. Um, we're not there yet, but again, this, these are goals. Um, there's uh, Justin, Dima, and me, kind of, we were supposed to be happy. I had to fight for this uh, key result because basically it's like all the others are like measurable, you know, someone's thought about like how to actually objectify that this is happening. Um, so this is, but um, again, this is a purely subjective thing. We want to be happy with our framework and when we're not, we say, okay, you know, stop feature development. Um, we're going to make changes that enable us to actually, you know, do the thing we want to do. And then um, we're obviously investing a lot in, in working and making work on AMP productive. Finally, and most importantly, all of you are obviously very important. Uh, we want developers to really love AMP. Um, and we're doing a few things to do this. One of the uh, most important ones is documentation. So our goal, again, is to make um, AMP be the best documented JavaScript library out there. Uh, we would definitely and absolutely love to have your feedback of where it's not and um, then we would like to fix it. Um, we have people like dedicated on this, working on it, and they, um, just in all the other places, we really are driven by what, what people want. Um, some of the things we have done is we've translated into 13 languages, and again, if there's one missing that um, you think would be important, we'd be happy to um, prioritize it. Not always, like it's not on our like doc side, but I think the, the, the best way to really get started with AMP on, a, on, a, on, a, on the markup level is AMP by example. So these annotated code examples really allow you to understand how things work and have um, the, the visual feedback together with the code. Um, and we're continuing to work on this, like rolling from this is how you make an image on your page to going way more in depth and having more complex examples on this, on this side. And, and then finally, uh, Paul is starting a video series called Amplify. Um, that is going to be on the YouTube channel together with um, you know, the videos from this conference. Again, next topic I think is, 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 is super important, um, which is one of the interesting things about AMP is that you're all uh, working with JavaScript that is you know, just on this server and um, you don't really know what's coming back. And this you know, crazy team is shipping new versions every week and that, you know, if you ship a new version of your dependency to your site, it might break it, right? Uh, so, but our, our clear goal is to not unintentionally ship breaking changes uh, this year. We, so the unintentionally is there intentionally. So we sometimes uh, have strong opinions about stuff and are willing to, to make breaking changes. Uh, one, of, one example that we didn't have here is that we now have add placeholder, which is technically a breaking change. I think everyone's happy with them. Um, but we obviously need to know when something we've done has unintended side effects. So um, the main thing we are investing in is visual diffing. So we are going to, at scale, render um, a not completely insignificant subset of all your pages with version n and version n plus 1 of AMP and just see if there's anything different and then uh, use that to judge whether we maybe did something that where we didn't anticipate that it would break any pages. And, you know, which would be, for example, we edit like some CSS and some of your pages, you know, needed something else, stuff like, so that's, um, I think it's gonna be very, very helpful in, in making AMP more stable. Um, 
even further, we really, really would like to have more external regular contributors on, on GitHub. We, I think, have an extraordinarily high number of contributors. Um, 300 is what we broke through like last week, which is, I mean, absolutely amazing and, and, and humbling, and thank you for that. Um, but what we are aiming for is having more people regularly contribute um, in the process. Paul was speaking earlier about the, um, some of the things we've been doing. So um, first of all, we've really, really invested in making our, our contribution docs. So not the, the docs that explain how you use AMP, but the, the docs that explain how you work um, on AMP, make them really welcoming and, and really easy to follow. Um, we have, we're working on having great first issues. So this is something we had for a while, but we realized we have to do much better with this. Um, so um, each of these issues will explain all the steps you need to do from A to B to C to D um, to, to fix that problem. So we'll like, on purpose, not fix it, so we can have one of you do it, so you have your, can get your feet wet uh, working in AMP. Um, so uh, I think this has been really nice. And, and then finally, we, we're doing these um, weekly design reviews where basically anyone from the community can come and say, I would like to make this change to AMP, or I would like to do X, uh, and this is my plan. What do you, what do you guys think about it? Um, and so we've been doing these for a while in our team, and at some point we said, like, why don't we just, like, it's on Hangout anyway, since we like distributed across the United States. Um, why, don't we, why don't we open it up and have everyone participate? We've been doing this like three times, I think, and, and it was uh, really uh, well received and, and worked really well, and had, we had great input from, from the community. Uh, final point, uh, hoping this is working. Uh, we're hoping for AmpConf to be a smashing success. Uh, uh, you know, see how this is gonna work out, but I think, I mean, I've been actually really, really happy with this. I mean, the, the talk quality was really, really high. Um, this venue is amazing, so um, hoping that works. Um, yeah, we have uh, one last thing, which is one of the reasons why we've been doing this event is um, last year at Google I.O., um, many of the developers on the M team um, were just hanging out and, and answering questions, and we realized like, how nice this works to get feedback into the team, because it's sometimes hard to get, you know, have empathy with developers who are working not you know, on AMP, but with AMP. And um, so I would like to get, invite my team on stage because, so you can see them all and like, chat with them. So come on. I think it's, um, yeah, let's give them a round of applause. It's, it's not quite everyone. There were some babies on the way and stuff like that. Um, <laughs> but it's most of them. So yeah, if you, if you find any of these fine people, like, feel free to chat them up. I think it's, um, it's very interesting in that AMP is entirely built on, on web technology. So all of us are web developers. Um, we have exactly the same problems as you all, like we um, think about the same things, read the same blocks. I think there's a lot of stuff to discuss. Uh, yeah, that's all, that's all we have. Thank you very much. <laughs>